Good morning, or evening, or afternoon, or good day. Uh, let's, we're going to continue dis discussing finding centers of mass of extended bodies. Um, and as a reminder, we, there is a procedure for finding a center of mass of um, a set of discrete objects. All right. So let's say we have these three objects. Define a place from which we'd like to measure the position of the center of mass. Well, what we can do is we, by definition, if we want to find the position of the center of mass, we add up all the products of the position and mass of each object and then divide by the net mass, the sum of all the mass. Now, for an object that's not made of, or for, sorry, for a system that is not made of discrete objects, but is a continuous collection of parts, what we do is extend this to say, well, yeah, we're adding up all these products of position and, and mass, but what we do is, well, now we add up all of the, which the definition of what an integral is, we add up all of the position and products of each infinitely small piece of mass. And then we divide by the system's total mass. All right, so when we go to an extended body, we have to integrate, all right? Because there are, we have to say there are an infinite number of infinitely small objects that hopefully we can locate. All right, so we will find the center of mass of this half circle, this solid half circle. Um, with an area density sigma defined to be mass per unit area. Um, this object has radius capital R. And the question is, what do you make this up out of? And, and here's why we have to answer that question. Well, if we go back to our expression for the position of the center of mass, where we integrate, which is to say add up all of the positions of each, uh, or the, the product of all the position and, uh, and, and mass of each little object, the question is, what's our little object? Now, let me just step back for one second. The reason I'm saying x position and not y position, because there could be both, um, if we know where the y position of this object center of mass is, because this object has symmetry about that axis, which is to say that if we rotated, oh boy, if we rotated this uh, half circle 180 degrees about that axis, um, you, 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 you wouldn't know. There's no way for you to tell. It would look just like it did before. That means there's symmetry about that axis. So we know that if there's symmetry, there's clearly the same amount of stuff up here as there is down here, so the center of mass must lie on that x-axis. But the question now is, well, how far out along the x-axis? That's why we're asking the position uh, of the center of mass along that x-axis. And we're going to define that position as measured relative to this point at the center of the circle. Okay? So, um, the question is, what should we say is our small element of mass. And you have a couple options here. Um, what can a half pizza be made of? Well, you know, certainly there's a, pizzas are made of slices, right? Everybody slices their pizza. Uh, so, you know, one thing is to say, let's make a, uh, a pizza out of slices. And that's going to be a different, um, a different video. This one, we're going to build on the last, uh, one of our just previous videos recently, which is to say, we can build this half pizza out of concentric half hula hoops that are re oh boy, really, really thin. I wish I could do that a little better. There, I think I've done it better, the power of the pause button. So we're going to say that, I'm going to say that we're building our half pizza out of um, a bunch of these uh, half hula hoops. Like there's a, a little one, and then another 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 one. And we build it out of these linear objects, 
kind of, well, kind of, but not really linear objects because they have a little tiny thickness, right? You see that little, they have this little tiny thickness here, right? So they're not really lines, they're little, they're little areas, okay? Each of those little half hula hoops actually has a little area, all right? So, um, yeah, well, and because, check this out, if we say here that our um, area density sigma is mass per unit area, then the mass of this whole thing is sigma times the area, the mass of the entire half pizza, which means that each little tiny part has a mass. So this thing, this, this red, uh, I mean this thing of that little area there has a mass. And that little tiny mass depends on how dense this thing is and on what, whoops, and on what little tiny area that that little sliver has. So we can start to address our expression here. And watch this. I'll say that, well, look, mass is sigma A. Right? And then we just defined our dm as sigma dm, all right? So right off the rip, we can see that what doesn't end up mattering is how dense this thing is. For a uh, half pizza of any and every density, the center of mass will be located at the same position relative to, relative to that center. Okay, so, you know, it's worth pointing out that, all right, why don't we just integrate, right? Why don't we just integrate x dA? Well, the problem is, a couple things. First of all, what does X mean again? X means, X has a, a special meaning. Um, X equals the uh, position of, of the center of position of each DM's center of mass. Sometimes that's trivial, right? Um, if we say, like, for a rod, and we're breaking it up into little tiny parts, where's this object's center of mass? Well, it's 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 right there. Right? That's no big deal, right? But for a half a hula hoop, things are different. To make this object or half pizza up out of these uh, these half rings, the position of that center of mass isn't trivial, right? And that's why we spent some time in the previous video, defining where the position of a center of mass of a half a hula hoop is, all right? And, you know, because, again, because we're building our object, building our half pizza out of half rings, each of these half rings has a center of mass that's located at a different place. And so what I'm getting at is x is a variable. The x coordinate of the position of center of mass for each of our dms varies. And so if we have one variable, we can't integrate with respect to a different variable. So what we need to do is get this integral to be a variable, be that variable. We need a variable that we integrate with respect to that, with respect to that variable. All right, so we've got to do some dot doing here to make the terms in our integral agree. Uh, let's see how. So what is our dA? Let's define our dA. Well, our dA is really, I mean, imagine that we take this strip, um, this, our, our, uh, our, our thing here, and we like unfold it. We unwind it. So what it is, is a thing that looks like this. Imagine this being like, you know, uh, a, a half a, a piece of tape, right? If we took the very last layer of tape off of a semicircular roll of tape and rolled it out flat, well, what it has is a length and, well, a little tiny height. And therefore, it has an area, right? Well, sorry, a little tiny area. Now, that little tiny height is, notice, a little tiny difference in radius. Yeah? So this is a dr. This length is an arc length, right? It's half of our circumference. That length is 
half of what's circumference, well, that's just pi times, now, pi times r. What r? Capital R? Uh-uh. Because -uh. this object, r dm, has a radius that ain't big r, so we're going to call it little r. And every one of our elemental dms has its own little r radius. So this length is pi r, and then this thickness is dr. So our dA is like a base times a height of this real skinny rectangle. Its base is pi r, and its height is dr. And now we're getting somewhere good because we've got a variable, and we've got d that variable. All right, so I'm going to write this now, substitute to say this is 1 over a times x. Now, dA is pi r dr. We still have the problem of having this x in here, because that's a variable, and we have a different variable, and at least, at least d that variable, so we got to address x. So... Uh, if you haven't seen the derivation of where the center of mass of a half a hula hoop is, um, that's worth a watch. Because by definition, in via derivation, we can show that um, the position of center of mass of a half hula hoop, and what are these elements really but half hula hoops, that position is 2 pi r. Without having developed that, there's no way that we can just, there's no way to address what x is other than that. But we're going to use that fact because we've spent time generating that expression. Oops. And, and what's nice is, notice, what is the position of a center of mass of a half hula hoop depend on? Well, it depends on r. And r, we've gotten to live, we've gotten to live in here. Right? We've got R's, we've got DR's. So now, what I'm going to do is use this expression for the position of center of mass of a half hula hoop and put it in here. So, position of center of mass of the half hula is 1 over A. So I'm working from here now. X is 2 pi R. And then here's the rest. Pi R DR. And now we have, um, well, the 2 over pi is a constant. Oh, well, look, we've actually got a pi over a pi. See you later, pi. 2 is a constant. And all we have is variable, d that variable. Life is wonderful. And what does little r range from? Well, we're saying what's the radius of the smallest half hula hoop that makes up this half pizza? That radius is 0. What's the radius of the biggest one? It's the whole radius. simplify a little now and say that position of center of mass is um, how about 2 over area. Pull out that 2 as it is a constant. Integrating r squared dr from 0 to big R. That's a pretty trivial integral. That is r cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to r. By definition, that means, let's keep the 2a, we do evaluate the top limit, subtract, evaluate the bottom limit. Is this fully necessary? Maybe not, but for demonstration sake on how to evaluate an integral, sure it is, because that is just 0. And what we get is an expression that says this integral is 2, or this center of mass expression is 2 over a r cubed over 3. So we're almost done. The question is, what is a? What is, now, capital A is the area of our entire half pizza, and that is half of a circle, the area of half of a circle. So this a is pi big R squared over 2, right, the area of the whole thing. So, working from here,
substituting that in for A, we get that the position of the center of mass is, let's see, 2 over, right, here's this 2 over A. 2 over A is 2 over 5 R squared over 2. So dividing by, divided by 2 is things multiplied by 2 times our R cubed over 3. And then we get to say, and divide, divide. Okay, so that's one factor of R. And we're done. We get that the position of center of mass, the position, I say, the position of center of mass of this half pizza is 4, 3 pipes, R. Done and done. Worth checking, 4 over 3 pi is less than 1, right? It's 4 over 12 and change. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a sorry, 4 over uh, 9 and change. So that's less than half of R. So at least it's not more than R. That would be bad if our position of center mass were outside this form. Uh, and that's your answer. Okay, so to uh, just wrap up a touch, here's, here's the thing that can be the most, in my opinion, the most challenging part of these center of mass problems is the actual meaning of x. All right, what does x mean when we say, you know, integrate x to the x? Um, you know, it's, it becomes increasingly rare to just say that x is x. Or x is y! Because we have to locate, right, x is about where the center mass of an element of an object is, and that element might be of an odd form, all right? In this case, it is of an odd form, and, you know, it happens, this, our half hula hoop happens to have a center of mass that's, you know, there-ish, all right? So sometimes it takes some extra derivation to say, well, where actually is the center of mass of my element? All right, so keep your eyes peeled for, uh, um, to do some thinking about what is my, what is the thing I'm building my greater form out of, and therefore, where is that thing center of mass? Okay, adios.